Hey guys, welcome to Moving Forward. Today we are talking about 360 degrees of communication. So I'm going to be covering communicating with your clients and I'm going to be covering communicating with your team. So let's get started. Welcome to part one of 360 degree communication and let's get started with communicating with your clients. So this article is by Jeremy Girard, and I thought he had a lot of good points and it's something that I was really able to um, relate with as far as communicating with my clients and the different people that I communicate with for my accounts. Sure. Um, so the basic background story is he was meeting with a prospective client mm -hmm. and the client was unhappy with their current provider of their service. And he basically figured out that it wasn't anything to do with the actual scope of the work. They were happy with what was getting done. They were not happy with um, the communication style. Oh. So, um, so it didn't have anything to do with the products or the prices. Sure. It, and that's the biggest thing is um, it can be just your communication right there can like hinder the success of a project. So the basic problem was that the company was communicating in a way that the client was not understanding and was not able to apply to to them and the bigger goals. So he kind of gives us a brief overview of how this happens and how we can do things to prevent it from happening. So the first thing was the communication breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so the interesting thing was that the company was providing regular updates on the project and milestones on it and they just weren't using the correct words. Oh. So the provider spoke web speak and nothing um, else, which I think... It's very tempting to do. It's yeah. easy to fall into when that's your job, when right. that's your full-time job. But when you're communicating to a client, exactly. yeah, it's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like they, the client appreciated the, the provider's knowledge of the profession and the industry, but at the end of the day, they wanted to know how did it apply to them. Sure. The next point he talks about is peer-to-peer -peer communication, which is what you just talked about a little bit. Um, so how we talk mm -hmm. here with our team and with each other is going to be different for sure than how we're speaking with the clients. Right. So we have to make it a point to make it easy for them to understand. And I think that's a part of my job is communicating. Um, and even this goes from communicating with what the client is saying to mm -hmm. our team right. and then back. Exactly. So it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You're the interpreter between the yeah, two exactly. groups. Yeah, exactly. So I need to make sure, and everyone else, that you understand completely what they are saying. Exactly. The next tip he gave for better communication with clients would be put the business second. So that was kind of surprising, but here's what okay. he means by that. Um, so he talks about having casual, non-business conversations with the clients before the meeting. The chit-chat. Yes. Okay. And I know a lot of the um, community managers here are really good at that, mm -hmm. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. So it's something that may not come easy to you right off the bat, but it's something that's very important. I find it's easy if you're going to walk into those types of situations, have a couple questions in mind already of what you're going to ask. You know, how's the weather? How was the drive? Yeah. How are you doing today? Right. Um, or even like just refresh your memory of what did we talk about last <clears throat> exactly. time? What little nuggets of information did they give me that I can ask? And about? if in the meeting beforehand they have given you some sort of personal, like, oh, my daughter's off to college or yep. something, you can always check in. And that shows great intentionality exactly on your part because you remembered that right so my, bonus like, points well, no. yeah if you remember the names that's, that's right <laughs> <laughs> another good benefit about just chit-chatting before a meeting is it helps to let the client see you as more than just their web designer their developer or their community manager it lets you yes. connect on a personal level exactly and that really helps to build yeah. the communication process mm -hmm. too yeah. you don't have to be too personal there yeah. is a line um, <laughs> but it is very good to show that you are more interested in who they are as a person mm -hmm. and how to help them then yeah then you can transition easily exactly that. and i think honestly that's what pay pro media is good with we go um, above or below the surface level, mm -hmm. especially since it's kind of a smaller community, we're able to mm -hmm. know a little bit more about the, the people that we're working with. Yeah, definitely. And that has helped us so many times with, okay, well, what, when we're trying to communicate a brand or a different logo or a facelift to their website, mm -hmm. we have a bit more of their personality in mind Yeah. so that we can better meet that needs without having to have 
endless meetings all right. the time. So, yeah, it's a good thing to try. It does help to get to that personal level if you can. Make sure and learn their language. Mm -hmm. After a while, you're going to have to get down to business. It can't yes. all be chit chat. <laughs> And so you're going to need to learn how they want to be um, communicated with. Mm -hmm. And speaking their language doesn't mean that you add in those horrible business jargon phrases. No. <laughs> <laughs> it just means that you communicate to them that mm -hmm. um, how they want to be communicated with. Right. Some are very just the facts. I just want to know what's, what I have to know. The bullet points. And then get out. <laughs> I have other things I need to do. Others want the starting from the beginning and how we work through everything and it's just just learn how their style is. It's I know. It's kind of like learning someone's love language in some ways. I know. That's very true. And I think the other point that he makes that's really important is to understand the overall goals of your client. Yes. And that way when you're giving them the updates, you know what's going to matter to them, what's going to keep them excited or interested and, mm -hmm. and um, confident in you for the project. Absolutely. So communication is a two-way street. We want to make sure that our clients are up to speed on different things that they need to know about as well because it's not all just going to be um, us holding the information. We want them right. to learn in the process Absolutely. as well. Here are a few things to look out for on your client's end of the conversation. When the project first starts and you have that initial meeting with um, potential client, new client, figure out who you're going to be speaking with in the company and figure out what their role is because yes. you want to be speaking with the people that have the authority to provide feedback to move the project right. along mm -hmm. as you need to. If you do find that you're dealing with someone who's essentially just an in-between, a messenger, mm -hmm. um, you run the risk of your words being mangled or recounted or... Taken the wrong way. Exactly. Misunderstandings exactly. and tension. A really good point that he made was that the success of the project really does come down to the quality of the communication mm -hmm. during the entire process. And I think I've really seen that the more I've gotten into this job and the role is how important communication really is mm -hmm. and speaking with the right people constantly. Right. Or at least enough to get the right answers. Right. And I know a lot of us want to rely on email all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's not always the best idea. No. Sometimes it's better just to pick up the phone and mm -hmm. schedule an in-person meeting or um, teleconference, whatever it may be, to get the key points on the project. Exactly. It's, it can be so frustrating or um, it brings in a whole other level of communication mm -hmm. when you're bringing an email because... If someone's having a bad day and they pull up your email and they're reading it in a negative tone, they're oh, just yeah. going to misunderstand what you're trying to say or mm -hmm. communicate to them. You could have written it in the most positive tone in your mind, yeah. but they're looking at it with that negative tone already in exactly. their mind. They're reading it that way. And it's amazing how angry emails can sound <laughs> when you're just reading it. I know. And with that tone. So um, it's far more, if there's, especially if there is something that needs to be resolved or mm -hmm. clarified, it's better, if at all possible, to pick up the phone or schedule a meeting and just do it in person. Yes. The other thing he mentioned was a lot of us, um, I know I'm not guilty of this, but some people <laughs> <laughs> just skim through an email yes. and you might miss those important parts. Mm -hmm. And then the other person is thinking, oh, I sent the email, he read it. And the other person's like, I didn't see that. Yep. And so sometimes just a phone call can resolve all of that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you can confirm when you're on the phone. Do you understand? Do you have any other questions? Yes, exactly. And, and make sure that they can move on from there. And the reason that I am such a big fan of email is that paper trail. Sure. It just helps me um, remember where we're at with things. Sure. So he actually that says that um, even though you might have a conversation in person or on the phone, you can still email and let them know, hey, this is what we talked about. This is what you're doing. Sure. What I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that would be a huge tip. Um, if you're not already doing that, make sure and try and send out just a small recap of what was discussed and decided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it also flipped where you send the email first and then say, I'll be calling you to discuss what is in this email. Yeah, So that's true. whatever works best for that, cook, for that mm -hmm. client. Another scenario to be mindful of is when someone jumps into the communication loop um, when you're already kind of deep into the project. Mm -hmm. I think we've saw that a little bit around here, but he actually gives some really good tips on what you can do when that situation Great. occurs. The funny thing was he mentioned Basecamp, which is what we, we use. use. Yeah. Um, so he said that these can be, or that can be a great resource for you. However, Basecamp doesn't always give you all the details that you might need. So the 
positive point that he has is to bring them up to speed and direct their new energy and their new enthusiasm in a way that moves the project forward. Detail what the next decision points are and how that person can provide input on the upcoming decisions. Um, so it's, it's not so much looking back, it's more so, okay, this is what you can do from here on out. Sure, sure. Despite our best efforts, there's always going to be times when there are communication breakdowns sure. and it could potentially put the entire project at risk because of it. So it's very important to avoid these breakdowns if possible mm -hmm. and identify them and be able to recover quickly yes. is very important. So obvious signs of strain communication in email includes expressions of frustration, mm -hmm. clearly miscommunicated messages and maybe decisions that contradict previous conversations. Oh, okay. Which is good to have paper trail or your notes from the meeting so that you can identify those. Right. He actually says not to say anything like, let me set the record straight. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> probably not a good idea. Probably not the best <laughs> idea to do that. He says, pick up the phone, call them, and say, hey, let's, quick, let's quickly have a chat or a meeting to address this issue immediately and get the project back on track. Yeah, clarify what's going on. Yeah. So something that I really took away from this article is that quality communication is for everyone in any industry. No matter what business you're in, healthy communication will help you be a better employee. Mm -hmm. And so I invite all of you to contribute to our discussion, our communication, and let us know how you are utilizing your communication skills in your workplace. Okay, so with my section for this show, it, we're going to be talking about how to communicate effectively with your team. Um, this is something that I've I think that I'm always growing in. I think I do pretty well, and then I'm like, oh, I need to communicate better. <laughs> so it's always interesting to see, especially getting some of these. I try to find these blogs or these articles often so that I'm just kind of doing the test and Brushing making up sure, on yeah, it. make sure I'm on top of things. Eh, it's not always easy. Um, <laughs> but this first article, um, it's from the Lead Change Group, uh -huh. um, and it's Five Ways to Improve Communication with Your Teams. Very good title. Mm -hmm. um, and I love this quote at the beginning. It says, um, since we communicate whether we want to or not, mm. it's in our best interest to get good at it. Yes. <laughs> it's by David Grossman, communication expert. Um, so they gave five things in this article. I'm, I'm only going to touch on a couple, but I highly recommend the five points are build rapport and get to know your people, take time to explain, create a culture that shares feedback, mm -hmm. act on the feedback you are hearing, and FaceTime is valuable. Yes. Um, so, but he did, before he gets, gets into the um, five things, he says, I think communication sometimes can be underestimated considering the world we live in. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you agree on this. Yes. Um, how do you see communication being underestimated? It's just, I think that we think since we're so connected that it's making things... Electronically connected. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That um, it's making things better, but at the end of the day, those that FaceTime, like you said, mm -hmm. is still so important. Yes. And just to clarify, we're also going to be talking about verbal communication. The written, the nonverbal, that'll be other shows too. <laughs> so it's a whole different layer to all of this. It's funny because... Um, I mean, we're humans, we're not robots, so it's like we rely on these on technology and everything, but we still need that human interaction. So <laughs> It's like that comic you see floating around the internet that is uh, someone grabbing their computer and holding it, like, no, all my friends live in here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> like, no. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I also agree that communication can be underestimated, um, especially the power of words. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's so easy for someone to say whatever they're thinking mm -hmm. that they don't have that pause of, okay, how can I best communicate this point to the person in front of me? Yes. And how will they receive this if I say it this way versus this way? Exactly. And it does take time. It takes training. It takes practice to figure that out. Be so. mindful mm -hmm. of it. Exactly. So the first one I want to touch on is take time to explain. Um, this is something that I feel I struggle with sometimes because I, again, it's that I assume somebody knows right. where, where we are in the progress. Yeah. And while they might, it the it's understanding where we've come from or reminding them where, where we are exactly right. in the process. Um, so taking a bit of time to say, okay, what do you know so far? Exactly. Um, I'm checking in on this project. Um, where are you? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the last you heard? And then starting the conversation from there. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you are providing, especially if you're giving uh, an assignment to your team, 
that you have gone over everything. Okay, the right. client stated this, and this is the need, and this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it, or communicating with them in some way, but making sure that you're giving them all the background information that they need. Oh, yeah. That's very hard. Definitely. Um, so what clues do you look for when you realize that, oh, someone doesn't have all the information? Are there verbal signals? Are there nonverbal signals? What is it that you see that you're like, okay, we need backup a bit? <laughs> uh, would it be in person or just through in email? Person. Probably just those statements of, oh, I wasn't familiar with that, mm -hmm. or usually I find that they'll the just... eyebrows raise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll just kind of come out and say, like, brief me on this, I didn't, I, I wasn't aware, and then mm -hmm. that's when I'm just like, okay, let's back up and I'll right. give you yeah. all the details. And... I know for some of my team, if they are, um, or other teams I've worked with, if they are new to the group, they mm -hmm. don't feel like they can say, whoa, 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 um, I need a little bit more information. Oh, yeah. So it's the watching those nonverbals that are really important. That's true. So, That's very true. Um, or at least starting the meeting with, I know this is new information for you. I just want to make sure that you're getting all everything. So do you have any questions before right. we get started? Well, that's when <laughs> or I along mean, the way. I think it's fine to over-communicate like, all the details. Especially to someone, even if you're having to repeat that, mm -hmm. um, those details. It might be boring for you, but <laughs> it's really necessary for your team. Yeah. Um, the other one is FaceTime is valuable. Um, it says FaceTime and communication can be underestimated at times. Technology is a great resource mm -hmm. to reach many people fast in today's world. We want to reach our teams all across the world in the most <laughs> effective, efficient way possible. However, we have gotten away from face-to-face -face connection that should not be replaced with video conferencing. Let's get out of the office and communicate eye to eye. Let's build the, those relationships by human connection. Mm -hmm. and, I, and there are so many times where it's so easy to just send an email to someone and or uh, I, there's been times I've, getting, I've gotten Facebook messages from someone mm -hmm. instead of just walking across the office and having that face-to-face <laughs> -face time. Yeah. So make sure that you're employing those And it can well. be so much more productive too. Absolutely. Just a five second conversation rather than send an email and then wait and make an email. I know, and exactly. So, or pick exactly. up the phone. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's with someone in your own office, take those extra steps and take that little <laughs> bit of time. And sometimes it's good to get out from behind your desk I know. and just go for it. I never regret going to someone's office and yeah. just asking them a question <laughs> rather than emailing That's them. That's so true. The only time I regret that is when they're not in their office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, dang it. Exactly. I walked all the way. No, just yeah. kidding. Um, okay, so the next article is communicating effectively with your team, which one of my teammate, um, teammates have, has written, um, Bethany, and um, she, gives, she gives six tips, um, and it's on our Paypro Media blog. The first one she talks about is keep messages clear and simple. Mm -hmm. Vagueness is too common in today's workplace. To lead effectively, you must provide all the details for deadlines, projects, and visions, Follow the basic who, what, when, where, and why model. And I've noticed um, maybe we aren't given a hard deadline, mm -hmm. so it's up to, like at least in my role, it's up to me to put a deadline on there. Exactly. And that's something that Justin has encouraged, definitely, mm -hmm. is to, even if you need to make up a deadline, just right. put a deadline on exactly. there. Exactly. So. And as a content team, we get that a lot, but we're having to juggle so many different projects mm -hmm. that it's needing to, we need to be able to prioritize our deadlines Yeah. and making sure that we have enough time to, to complete everything mm -hmm. and in a way that is perfect for that client. Right. So for us, deadlines are very important. Oh, I really yeah. appreciate you putting a deadline <laughs> on somewhere. Definitely. Um, the other one that I wanted to talk about is keep employees in the loop. When difficult issues arise, don't dance around them. Mm -hmm. Doing so can hinder productivity and morale in the workplace. Instead, be open, honest, and informative. Mm -hmm. If something like layoffs or budget cuts may occur, never deliver the news via email or phone. Mm. This is definitely something you need to address verbally. Always do so face-to-face, -face, providing ample explanation for the events. Mm -hmm. And But the ample explanation you also need to be sensitive to. Sometimes it's not always necessary that everybody knows everything about right. all the details. Yeah. So be very sensitive to all the other parties that are involved. Right. Um, sometimes that may mean that you talk to your supervisor about what you can communicate to your team mm -hmm. and how. Um, that's true. But, it's, but to make sure that you are not giving too many details because sometimes that's privileged information exactly. and you need to be careful. You're overstepping your boundaries. So again, um, that's Communicating Effectively with Your Team by Bethany Alcock and it is on our paper media blog. Okay, so the next article, our, 
and last is ways to communicate effectively in the workplace. Um, and there are a lot for this one. I think there's, yes, 20. Um, so I'm not gonna touch on all of them, but just as, and it's by um, Small Business Trends. And I'm just gonna read the, top, the 20 and then we'll look at the ones that we're sure. going to um, highlight. So there's open meetings, emails, one-on-one, -on -one, use presentations, communication via training, display confidence and seriousness, uh, use simple words, use visuals, listen to your team members, use the appropriate tone of voice, mm -hmm. avoid unnecessary repetition, create a receptive atmosphere, be humorous, be articulate, avoid mumbling, encourage feedback, and be appreciative. Mm. So check this article out. It's great a great resource. Lot of good points. Uh, and it's not just how to c communicate, but different uh, avenues of how to communicate. So check those out. Yeah, I like that. Um, the first point I wanted to talk about is display confidence and seriousness. Um, ensure that you display confidence and seriousness to ensure that you will not be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. When your team members notice any uncertainty or lack of seriousness when you're communicating with them, they are likely to treat the information with disdain or disregard. Right. How have you experienced this? Uh, I can agree. Do you and see this with your clients as well? If you're communicating something from like paper media or vice versa? It depends on the client. Um, but I, I feel like I'm always having to adjust my communication style a little bit, tweak it a little bit, depending on the client and the relationship that mm -hmm. we have. Um, but if it's something that is important, I make sure to you know, get back to the seriousness of it um, right. yes. and not present it in a mm -hmm. bluff way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and with that, there are often times that my team will ask me something that I don't know the answer to, uh -huh. but instead of feeling or coming across as, um, I don't know and I am feeling insecure about right. this, which it, it used to be my tendency was like, oh my goodness, I don't have all the answers yeah. and I'm supposed to lead this team. You know, it's yeah. not that you just explain, I don't have the answer to that. I will contact this person who does have the answer and right. we'll get an answer back to you by a certain time. Yeah. And, and can, that helps. Yeah, I can see the clients um, on my end really appreciating mm -hmm. something like that too. Exactly. Like, admit that you don't have the answer, but you'll get the answer mm -hmm. for them. That is a great question. I will get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one is use simple words. The truth is that everybody cannot be on the same page when it comes to vocabulary. Therefore, to be effective in your communications with your team members, use words that can be easily understood. Keep your vocabulary easy to understand the first time it comes out of your mouth. Right. Having to say the same thing a couple times hoping that everybody in the room will get it is just wasting time yeah so you want to keep get it, it right the first time exactly this is not the time to impress your um, team with your doctorate vocabulary no, so, so a couple of tips that I have for keeping your words appropriate is to speak directly concisely and to the point um, you don't use four words when one will do mm. um, and if you need to practice ahead of time do it That's it's true. really important that you just kind of mentally prepare what you're going to say to your team mm -hmm. and how you're going to say it. Yeah, oftentimes I think that I will write out an email and then as I'm reading back through it, I'm like, you know what? Like, I picture myself reading it. Or right. I, I put myself in their shoes reading it and I'm like, they don't need to know all this and I'll take a lot out of it. Um, this could be a whole nother show, but a, qu a few quick tips of how to communicate with listening to your team members. For me, is to turn away from the computer. Mm -hmm. It'd be so distracting to just happen to glance at that email that I just know. came in. And get sidetracked. <laughs> or um, turn away from your cell phone. Put down your cell phone. You turn don't need it over. It. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that's a great point. I do that. That's so easy because a lot of people, I, I don't, but you'll get the notifications and you can start reading the text message. Uh -huh. Just don't do that. It's, nope. so, it's, it's so distracting. Um, look them in the eye. Give nonverbals and communicate mm -hmm. that you are following with them. And don't walk away. Mm. There have been times where I, unless, <laughs> I like sometimes it's been like in a real retail store, and you know they're just going to be setting up the booths along the way. Right. And but it's still hard to have a conversation <laughs> when you're just talking to their back as you're trying to That's move on true. with them. So don't walk away. Keep focused with them and acknowledge that you are following along with them. Yes. So uh, so those are the articles that I have for today. But I really encourage you to check out these articles yourself and kind of figure out what ba ways that you can improve as a team leader. I would love to hear also how you have found techniques and tips to um, better effectively communicate with your team. Um, so you leave a comment or. You you can reach me on Twitter at Leilani SQ. 
And I would love to hear from you guys. You can tweet me at Thought Kebabs. And make sure and tune in next time for part two of our 360 degree communication, where we are going to be talking more about this very important topic of communication. Thank you. Thank you.